today in the name of Jesus Christ, our wonderful Lord and Savior. We're glad to see you here in the auditorium of the Northside Baptist Church today. We welcome every one of you. We appreciate you visitors that came to worship with us today. Always glad to have you. And you that's listening out in the radio listening audience, we most certainly appreciate you tuning in to the Northside Baptist Church Hour that's coming to you live right from the auditorium of the Northside Baptist Church here in Athens, Georgia. Now this is Preacher Edward speaking, and we're hoping during the next hour we can be an inspiration to you. And you out in the radio listen audience, if you get on your phone and call a friend and have them to tune in, especially a shut-in, will endeavor to be a blessing to them as well. So I hope you do that. Now at this time, Paul will take over and direct the song service. Now I'm sure what he has lined up for us will be a blessing. And I believe he's singing the one title, I Know Whom I Believe. Is that right, son? Which one he's singing? That's all right? Okay. <laughs> Paul takes over at this time. And I, about the first mistake I made today, I believe. But anyway, he'll take over and direct the singing. And, and so I'm sure that what he has lined up for us will be a blessing to our hearts. So Paul at this time. Get your hymnal, turn to page 341. <laughs> Thank you for that beautiful song. Take your Bible now and turn, will you please, to the book of Mark, chapter 9. In the original Schofield Reference Bible, it's page 1058, is where I'll be reading. Mark, chapter 9. While you're turning there, let me say just a word to the radio listen audience. If you're not getting our daily broadcast, if you're tuned to the station where you're now listening, you can get the daily broadcast at 12 noon. And I hope you do that if you're not getting it. And then I want to, you to pray for me and write to me because this is a home mission work. And we work this together in getting out the gospel. And I believe with all my heart when we stand yonder at the great judgment seat of Christ, we'll be rewarded together for all the good that's been done through this ministry. I can't do it alone. It takes us all to work together to get the job done. Turn to Mark chapter 9 and while you 
still turning there, let me remind our people here, you need to be aware of this cult, this movement, not the Sun Yun Moon movement. It's a Mooney movement. It's a, a movement that's anti-Christ in a sense, anti-Bible. It's a very dangerous uh, movement to call themselves the Moonies. They go around selecting funds, setting flowers, candy, or any way they can get money for their false prophet, old man Moon himself. He is an antichrist, a false prophet out of Korea. And he's headed up a cult, a very dangerous cult, which is far more dangerous in this country and where it's operating than communism is. Now the communists will tell you they don't believe in God. They won't deceive you there. They say we don't believe in God. We don't believe in the Bible. But this false prophet and his followers, and which are many thousands of young people, they have been deceived. They play in the realm of religion. But it's a cult. It's a false doctrine. It'll send your soul to hell. Now this man Moon is a false prophet. He's an antichrist. And many of his followers feel like he is the third person, Jesus Christ. And so it's a very dangerous, very dangerous movement. They encourage young people to leave their homes, leave their families, and go out and work in this cult. And Satan is behind it. It's not of God. God has nothing to do with it. And you need to be aware of it. And whenever they come to you begging funds, trying to sell you flowers or, or candy or chewing gum or whatnot, Make them give you their identity. They don't like to do that. They won't tell you who they are because they know the moment that they tell who they are, then you've heard about it and know it's a, it's a cult. And of course, they like to hide the identity. That shows you it's not of God. I don't mind telling anybody that I'm a missionary independent Baptist preacher. I'm proud of the fact that I'm independent Baptist and missionary. But they hide their identity to a certain extent. And they're called moonies. Now you be aware of these people as much so as you would a rattlesnake. They're very dangerous. Have nothing to do with them. Give them nothing. And don't be identified with them. They'll join up with you in some kind of movement or working against communism. But they're more dangerous than the communists are in that respect. I have more respect for the communists. And God knows I don't like the communists. I have more respect for them and I have the moonies. Because the communists will tell you quickly they, they uh, don't believe in God. The atheists, many of them. And the moonies will deceive you in religion and send your soul to hell or lead you to hell. As a very dangerous cult. Like the Russellites and other cults in the land. Now so much for that. Now Mark chapter 9 beginning with verse 43. If thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life man than having two hands to go into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched. While the worm dies not, and the fire is not quenched. If thy foot offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter halt into life than having two feet to be cast into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched. While well, the worm dies not, and the fire is not quenched. If that eye offend thee, pluck it out. It's better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire. While well, the worm dies not, and the fire is not quenched. Now who spoke these words? None other than the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Now Jesus warns us about the awfulness of hell. And Jesus Christ, the Son of God, said more about hell than all the other writers put together. If you deny the fact of hell like the Russellites do, then you call Jesus a lie. You say Jesus is not telling the truth. And the Bible says God cannot lie. It's the cult that lies, not, uh, not God. The Bible is true. People that do not believe in a literal burning eternal hell deny the Bible and say they don't believe in what Jesus said. They say Jesus is not telling the truth. And the Bible says let God be true and every man a liar. And any time you're confronted with a cult that do not believe in hell or eternal hell, you better shun that cult. It's of Satan. It's not of God. Now today I want to speak to you on this line of thought. 
10 common sense reasons why I don't want to go to hell. I believe there's a hell. I believe there's a heaven. The same Bible that tells us about heaven tells us about hell. And you can't discard the fact of hell and say, I believe in heaven. You can't do that. If you discard hell, you have to do the same for heaven. And if you believe the Bible, you have to believe in both heaven and hell as the Bible tells us. The Word of God is very clear on the fact that when you die, you either go to heaven or hell immediately after death. When your soul leaves your body, you either go up into the third heaven in the paradise of God or you drop down into the bowels of this earth in a place called hell. One of the two. You cannot be neutral. And the very fact that you say, well, I don't believe in it, doesn't discard the fact. It's true anyway. And one of these days you will be a believer, but it may be too late. Now there's a hell to shun and a heaven to gain. And I want to give you down to the earth common sense reasons why I don't want to go to hell. I most certainly don't want to go to that terrible place. I read about it in the Bible. I've heard of testimonies of people dying without God, screaming, I'm burning, I'm tormented, I'm in flame. Now those certainly don't want to go to that awful place called hell. Reason number one, I would be out of place down there because hell was not prepared for me. Chapter 25 and verse 41, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, said, Depart from me, you cursed into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. When Jesus Christ prepared hell, when he made hell, he did not build hell or make hell for you or me. He made it in the beginning for the devil and his angels. You remember the devil rose up against God and he led a group of angels with him, about a third of the angels in heaven, to rebel against God. And God kicked them out. And God fixed a place for them. And that place was called hell. And God prepared hell for the devil and his angels. They'll eventually end up in the lake of fire. The devil will. He'll be in the lake of fire. But God did not build hell in the beginning for you or me. But for the devil and his angels. That's why I would be out of place down there. Now you may say, preach Edwards, if God did not build hell for us, then why do people go there? The reason human beings go there is because God cannot carry them to heaven if they're not saved. That's no person could ever go to heaven unsaved. Jesus said, unless you're born again, that's what happens when you get saved. You're born by the Spirit of God and the Word of God. You can in no wise enter in. No way. No way can any sinner ever go to heaven unsaved. But where can he go then? There's only two places beyond this earth. That's heaven and hell. And if God cannot carry him to heaven, then there's no other place for him but to drop right down into the heart of this earth in the bowels of hell while the rich man cried out, I am tormented in this flame. So God made hell for the devil and his angels and sinners go there and they're going in every day by the thousands, hundreds of thousands that die without God. The Bible said hell has enlarged itself. Sinners are going to hell on the broad road to destruction. They're going. They're going every day into that place called hell. But God didn't prepare hell for them. He can't take them to heaven. So that's exactly where they go. The second common sense reason I don't want to go to hell is because God doesn't want me to go to hell. Did it ever occur to you that God doesn't want you to go to hell? Oh, you may say, now preach, Edwards, if God doesn't want me to go to hell, why would I be sent there? You'll be sent there because you do not know Jesus Christ as your Savior. You die in your sins. And God cannot carry you to heaven. But God doesn't want you to do that. God doesn't want you to reject Jesus Christ and die in your sins. In 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 9, the Bible said the Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us with not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. 
So God is not willing for any man to go to hell. God doesn't want you to go to hell. If you go to hell, you'll go there because you have rejected God's son, Jesus Christ, because you haven't received him as your savior. It's not God's will that you go there. God gets no glory out of you going to hell. God can be glorified in the death of the righteous, not the sinner. And so God doesn't want you to go there. You don't have to go there. That's good news for you. But if you continue on in your sins without Jesus Christ, that's exactly where you're going. You're going into that terrible place called hell because if you die without God, there's no way. No way you can go to heaven. Then we come to the third common sense reason. I don't want to go to hell. It's because there's no water down there. Have you ever thought about being in a place where it was hot and where there's flame and smoke and no water? Now you think about poor people that's tormented in terrible flame, screaming in the regions of the damned, and can't get one drop of water. That's a terrible torment within itself. The Bible says in Luke chapter 16 verse 24, And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. There's absolutely no water in hell, not one drop. Why, Dives here pleaded that Abraham and let Lazarus come and just dip the tip of his finger in water and cool his tongue. God said, no way. There he rejected God and Lazarus on the earth, gave him no crumbs that fell from his table, and now he can't even get one drop of water on his parched tongue. I don't want to go any place where I can't get some water when I get thirsty. And if you go to hell, your drinking water days are all over. You get no more water. You'll have to suffer there in the pains of hell without any water for uh, ages and ages, years and years, without any water until the great white throne judgment when you stand before God and you'll get no water there. You'll be cast from there into the lake of fire. Hell is an awful place. Jesus tells us about it, says more about it than all the other writers put together. There's no water down there. For that reason, I most certainly don't want to go to hell. I love water. When I get thirsty, I like to drink good sparkling water. I love it. And I don't want to go to a place where I can't get any. And then we come to reason number four. The real common sense reason I don't want to go to hell is because I could not invite my loved ones there. I don't want to go any place where I couldn't invite my loved ones. My wife or my children or any of my loved ones, if I can't invite them there, I don't want to go there. There's not one soul in hell will ever go to hell that wants to see their loved ones anymore. Because they know if their loved ones come to that place, they would be in the same predicament and they don't want them to come there. The Bible says in Luke chapter 16, verses 27 and 28, Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou would send him to my father's house, for I have five brethren, that it may testify to them, lest they also come to this place of torment. Here we find the rich man in Luke chapter 16, died, and in hell he lifted up his eyes. And he realized what had happened. He realized he had died without God. He realized he was in the flames of a terrible burning torment in hell. And he knew on this earth he had five lost brothers. Now he wasn't concerned about them while he was on the earth because he was lost. No lost man is concerned about any other lost man. And so therefore he was not concerned. But when he died and went to hell, he immediately thought about his five brothers. Oh, he said, I don't want my brothers to come to this place of torment. I don't ever want to see them again. I don't want my loved ones to come here. If they come to this place, that means they'll have to suffer like I'm suffering. I don't want them here. Oh, listen to me, dear soul. The inmates in hell today don't ever want to lay eyes on their loved ones again that's on the earth. Now their loved ones is down in hell, no doubt maybe accusing them, maybe children accusing their parents said, 
If you'd have been right with God and carried me to church and told me about Jesus Christ, I wouldn't be in hell today. And they'll be pointing their fingers in the face of their mothers and dads throughout the endless ages of eternity because they didn't teach them or tell them about God and let them grow up and die and go to hell. I would hate to go to hell and my children come tumbling in with me and point their finger in my face and say, Daddy, if you'd have told me about Jesus, I wouldn't have been here. Won't that be awful? That's happening in hell today. That's terrible. That's awful. There's children today accusing their parents in hell today. And the liberals and the modernist ministers and others that go down in the hell. There's sinners pointing their fingers in their faces and saying, If you had believed the Bible like you should have, had not been a liberal, or tied up in some cult like the Moonies or the Russellites or the Adventists or some of the others, and died and come to hell, I wouldn't have been here. It's an awful thing to die and go to hell and know that your loved ones will come tumbling in after you get there. There's parents in hell today waiting and screaming. Oh, no, 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 I don't want my son. I don't want my daughter to come here. I wish somebody would tell them. I wish someone would tell them about Jesus. I hope they don't die without God. And you can't invite your loved ones there. That's one reason I don't want to go there. I want to go to heaven where I'd love to see my loved ones come and join me on the other side. Reason number five, the, the fifth common sense reason why I don't want to go to hell is because there's no saint of God found in that place. Can you imagine being in a world, in a place, in an environment where there's not one saved person? What kind of nation would America be if we didn't have any Christians in America, any born-again believers, which is the salt of the earth and the light of the world? It'd be terrible, wouldn't it? You go to some of these prisons today where they have wicked people, murderers and gamblers and dope addicts and robbers and thieves, and go into a prison where they don't have any believers there and listen for a while and see what you hear and see how they act. Down in hell, there's not one saved person down there. Everybody's cussing and screaming and accusing and pleading and begging and praying, but not a saved person down there. I don't want to go there. God's people are my people. I love saved people. I like to be around them. I most certainly don't want to go there. In Luke chapter 16 and verse 26, uh, Abraham said, Beside all this, between us and you, there's a great guff fixed. So the thing which come from passing his to you cannot, neither can they pass us that would come from his. Here we have Dives begging, pleading. He said, let Lazarus come down here. Let him bring one drop of water. Abraham said, he can't pass the guff. He can't come. Amen. There's not one saint of God that can get there. Many years ago here in the city of Athens, there's a young man that got an argument with another young man over some money that the young man owed him. They were both in their late teens, and the man pulled a knife out of his pocket and stabbed the man that owed him the money in the heart, and he dropped dead. The next day or two, I passed up the street just across from the jail, and up there on that jail floor at the top story at the window, this young man was crying. He is begging for Mama. Mama, won't you please come? Mama, please come. I need you, Mama. There that poor boy was begging for his mother. I want to tell you, dear soul, down in hell, you can beg for your mother, your dad, or whoever you please, but they can't come and help you. That's not a saint of God in hell, not one. Common sense reason number six is because there's no rest down there. Don't you like to rest whenever you grow tired and Lie down to sleep at night and close your eyes and rest and sit down and relax. Don't you like that? Why, sure you do. These bodies were made that it requires a certain amount of rest. In Revelation chapter 14, verse 11, the Bible said, And the smoke of their torment is up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night. Whosoever, whosoever worshiped the beast's image and whosoever received the mark of his name. According to the Bible, down in hell... There's no rest day or night. Those people are tired and exhausted and they can't find any rest. They can't find any place to relax. They just can't find it. It's not there. They're tired. They're weary. Their bodies are aching for rest, but there's no rest in hell. 
Now just think about being in a place where there's absolutely no rest whatsoever. Down here you labor on your jobs. You get tired and you come in. And at night time you want to sit down, you want to relax. You want to rest, you want to go to bed. And you can enjoy resting. But think about the poor inmates of hell. There's no rest for them. The Bible says the place where there's no rest whatsoever. I don't want to be someplace where I can't rest. I get tired occasionally. And I want to sit down and relax and rest a while. Jesus said to the disciples, come apart and rest a while. And if you don't come apart and rest a while, you will eventually come apart. And so God wants you to rest when time comes for your rest. Down in hell, that's no rest. And that's another common sense reason I don't want to go there. Reason number seven is because the judgment and the lake of fire that awaits them. Now let me explain something here to you. When a sinner dies, he doesn't go to the lake of fire that he'll go to in the future. When a sinner dies on this earth, he drops right down into the heart of this planet, right down into the middle of the earth. But there's flame down there, there's torment down there. But that's not his final abode. One day he'll be sentenced and sent to the lake of fire. That's coming a judgment for that sinner. He's got to face a holy God and be judged. In Revelation chapter 20, verses 12 and 14, the Bible said, I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were open, and another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things that were written in the book, according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Every lost sinner must face death. The second death. The second death is that time when he'll be brought up out of hell at the end of the millennium. At the end of the great millennium that's yet in the future known as the golden age. At the end of that thousand year golden age period. Every lost sinner down in the bowels of this earth going to be brought out to stand before God. In Old Testament days before Calvary. All people went down into the heart of the earth, both saved and unsaved. There were two compartments. One compartment was called Abraham's bosom, which was paradise. The other was hell. And there was a great gulf between them. Now when Jesus died on the cross, he descended down into the heart of the earth and he took all the saved people out of Abraham's bosom in paradise and he moved paradise up into the third heaven in the presence of God. There's no saved people down there now. That compartment is empty as far as we know. But on the other side of that gulf, those sinners are still there. That rich man that begged for Lazarus, he's still there. They're there in the flames of a burning hell. When Jesus comes and raptures out the church and then the tribulation period, then Jesus sets up his kingdom on the earth and then there's a thousand years of peace on the earth at the end of that thousand year period of peace, then God is going to empty up that compartment where the rich man is now waiting and all sinners are now waiting. God will bring them out and they'll all stand before God in the bodies they died in. They're going back in those old corruptible bodies and stand before God. Down in hell, they're now in their soulless bodies. They'll come out and go back into that old corruptible body in which they died and they'll stand before God and they will be judged according to how they lived as a sinner on the earth. Their judgment for the future then will be meted out according to their works. Has nothing to do with the time element whatsoever. And God will judge them and each one will be punished according to his works as a wicked individual. Somebody said, well, I'm lost going to hell. Might as well commit all the sins they can. The more sins you commit, the greater will be your punishment if you die without God. And at the great white throne judgment, there God will judge them. And then they'll all be cast into the lake of fire. And that'll be their home forever in the lake of fire. How awful. That is called the second death. For that reason, I don't want to go to hell. 
The, the eighth common sense reason, sense reason I don't want to go to hell is because of the group that will be there. Now you're talking about a society. You're talking about a group of people. Let me just read to you some of the people that will be there found in the word of God. These are lost sinners, of course. Not a saved person in this group. They're all lost. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 through 10, Know you not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? That's the unsaved, the unrighteous. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, that's your homosexuals, nor abuse themselves of mankind, that's your homosexuals, for nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor extortioners, that's people that charge you too much for what you buy, overcharge you for the work they do, scheme and plan to beat you out of everything, they take the advantage of you, the extortionists, shall inherit the kingdom of God. Revelation chapter 21 and verse 8, but the fearful and unbelieving and abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all lies shall have their part in the lake which burns the fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Now that's some group of people to have to spend an eternity with. This class I enumerated here, God said they'll be in hell and that'll be your crowd. You'll be in that crowd forever. The Hitlers, the Starlings, Joe Stalins, the Mussolinis, the robbers, the Charles Mansons, all that group, the, the crowd, the murders, all of that group will be there in hell screaming forever and that'll be your crowd. For that reason, I don't want to go there. God's people are the greatest people on the face of the earth because they've been changed. Their hearts have been changed by the power of God. They're the light of the world, the salt of the earth. And they're God's chosen people, the apple of his eye. And that's my crowd. That's why I'll go to heaven. That's why I want to be there because of that crowd. Now, I don't want to join that other crowd down there. These curses, these blasphemers, the atheists, the evolutionists and all that crowd that don't believe the Bible and the Word of God, the Mooners, the Russellites, the Adventists, and the Mormons, all these cults that don't know God, that's where they're going. In this terrible place that where they know not God. They've been deceived by false prophets, false teachers, and missed heaven and end up in hell. Common sense reason number nine is because I would be missing heaven. If I went to hell, I would be missing heaven. Heaven is a most wonderful place, undescribable. God tells us something about it, but all it merely touches on it. And Paul was caught up into the third heaven, and God said, don't you speak a word on earth about what you saw up here. God didn't want Paul preaching what he saw in heaven because God knew we'd get so homesick, we'd pray to die that we might soon get there. Heaven is a wonderful, wonderful place. Our little finite minds can't comprehend the beauty of heaven. God said in my father's house are many mansions. And if I went to hell, I would miss heaven. And I most certainly don't want to miss heaven. In John chapter 14 and verse 2, he said in my father's house are many mansions. If you were not so, I would have told you, I'm going to prepare a place for you. And he said, if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. Where I am, there may be also. Heaven is the most wonderful place. Now I want to tell you, dear soul, if you miss heaven, you have missed it. And I don't want to go to hell because if I go to hell, I have missed God's best for me that's yet yonder in the future. And then reason number 10, the 10th reason, the 10th common sense reason I don't want to go to hell is because it is everlasting. Now if a person could go to hell, build his sinners, and then get out, He'd say, well, I'll just take a chance on it. But you can't do it. I was asking a friend of mine, in fact, a cousin of mine yesterday, uh, uh, about his brother that's uh, serving time uh, in, uh, in, in the state of Georgia, in Reesville. I asked him how he's getting along. He's been uh, in prison for many, many years over a terrible crime he committed. He said, uh, he said Virgil said uh, he, he just about lost his mind. He spent all of these years, got with the wrong crowd, got into this dope outfit and, and committed a crime and been in prison now, I, I suppose, close to 20 years maybe. 
And he says he just about lost his mind. Isn't that something? To live there among all those criminals and, and all your young days and your youth and, and then as you grow older, just can't take it anymore mentally and lose your mind. Oh, listen to me. Hell is everlasting. If a person could go to hell and then get out after a million years, he could afford to take a chance, but you can't do that. Daniel chapter 12 and verse 2. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall wake some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. In my text with these verses I close, Mark chapter 9 verses 45 and 46, If thy foot offend thee, cut it off. It's better for thee to enter into life halt than having two feet to be cast into hell into the fire that never shall be quenched while the worm dies not and the fire is not quenched. All oh, listen to me. There's people in hell today that had good intentions. They said, one of these days I'm going to get saved. And one of these days I'll get right with God and I'll go to heaven. I want you to listen to me. Some of you in the radio listen audience right now. You're getting up in years. Some of you past middle age. You're still lost sinners on the road to hell. And the older you become, the harder it's going to be for you to repent and get right with God. Because you're set in your way. But you listen to this Baptist preacher. If you go on in your sins and die and go to hell. You can blame nobody but yourself. After you've heard this message today. I beg you to get right with God. Many of a person's died and gone to hell. That fully intended to have gotten right with God later. But they missed it. They died before they got saved. I wouldn't go home and pillow my head tonight. Unless I knew God, I'd be afraid to. I'd be afraid to drive down the highway if I didn't know God. The drunks are killing 25,000 people a year on the highways. There's 70 people being buried on the average every day in America killed by drunks. I'd be afraid to get on the highway if I didn't know God. If you're not saved, you ought to get saved today. Hell is an awful place and it's everlasting. Let's stand our feet. Father, I pray today in Jesus' name that you use the message. God, I pray that you speak to someone today in this auditorium, not in the radio listen audience. May somebody this day get saved as a result of this message today. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We do have this message on cassette tape. Now, if you're here in this building, you're unsaved in just a moment. The ladies that play on the instruments. If you're unsaved, backslidden, you want to come back to God, join the church, come down here for any reason, I want you to feel free to move out as they play. Now you pray and give us your undivided attention. These are serious moments. You don't want somebody to go to hell because maybe you didn't give your attention like you should. You pray and you listen now while we wait. Hell is a terrible place. People go there because they die without Jesus Christ. Church membership, reformation, education, determination will not get you to heaven. You've got to be saved by the grace of God or you'll die without Jesus Christ. There's multitudes in hell today that's got the names on church roads, been baptized or sprinkled or christened. They're lost without God that died and went to hell. Are you ready today? If you should die before 1 o'clock this afternoon, would you go to heaven? Are you ready? If not, you ought to do something about it while we wait. Would you come? If you're not saved, would you come?